Hi, this is Ben Finio with Let's Go Boys and Girls, and this video will serve as a tutorial and introduction to the Squishy Circuits activity so your students can build light-up sculptures out of their conductive Play-Doh circuits. So, this video is going to assume that you have already made your conductive and insulating Play-Doh following, di following directions available from the Squishy Circuits store at www.squishycircuitsstore.com and keep in mind the use of food coloring is arbitrary, so I've selected bluish green for conductive and orange for insulating, but you can use whatever colors you want that doesn't affect the conductivity of the dough. Just make sure you use different colors so you can tell the two apart. Now, the other things you'll need to purchase are battery packs and LEDs available from the Squishy Circuit Store. Now, the battery packs are a little more expensive than standard battery packs because they have these metal rods soldered onto the ends of the wires, but these are great because they are very easy to stick directly into the Play-Doh. So while you can get cheaper battery packs elsewhere, they just have flimsy wires attached that are very difficult to stick into the Play-Doh, so these are worth the extra expense. And then the next thing you'll need is LEDs. How many you need will depend on your budget, how many students you have, and how many LEDs you want each of them to have access to. Any LED will work. The Squishy Circuit Store has these nice jumbo ones that are a little easier for younger children to handle. But that's all you need materials-wise. And depending, I'm going to go through this assuming that your students have no prior experience to circuits, so starting with the basics. The first thing you'll want to explain to them is that batteries have positive and negative sides. So most of them will probably be familiar with looking at batteries from toys and TV remotes and that sort of thing that batteries have a plus on one side, and the other side is minus, but there usually isn't actually a minus side printed there. Now, in electronics, we use different color-coded wires to correspond to positive and negative. Red usually means positive, and black usually means negative. And in order for a circuit to be completed and allow electricity to flow, the red wire has to somehow be connected to the black wire, so we'll get to that in a little bit. Now, looking at the LEDs, there's also an important distinction to note here. If you look at these metal things sticking out of the LEDs, these are called leads. They're also sometimes just referred to as legs or wires. You'll notice that one of them is longer than the other, and that's because the longer one has to be connected to the positive side or the red wire, and the shorter one has to be connected to the black wire. You can explain that LEDs kind of act like a one-way valve for electricity. Think like a, of a one-way valve or a one-way door that only opens in one direction to let water or people through. An LED is like a one-way valve that only lets electricity flow in run one direction. So make sure they understand the basic idea of positive and negative. And then you can have them make their first circuit where they take a battery pack and two small lumps of conductive dough. So I'm going to do this in real time here. I haven't prepared anything off of the side of the camera. I'm just going to take my two pieces of conductive dough, insert leads from the battery pack, and spread the leads on one of the LEDs out. So you can see they come in the package like this, but it's, this is much easier to do if you spread the leads out like the one I'm holding in my right hand here, and just stick the LED into the lumps of conductive dough, and you see that the LED should immediately light up. So you can explain to the students that they have just created a closed circuit. The electricity has a complete path to flow through the red wire, through the conductive dough, through the LED, and then back through the black wire into the battery pack. Now, if they disconnect one side of the LED, you see that it doesn't light up anymore, and that's because this is an open circuit. So electricity needs that complete path. It can't just flow out and back through the red wire. It has to come out all the way through and then back in. So make sure they understand the difference between an open and closed circuit. And you can optionally explain that this is actually what light switches and power switches do. So the battery pack has a built-in power switch. When you turn that off, all that's doing is creating an open circuit to prevent electricity from flowing. Then when you turn it back on, it's creating a closed circuit again. <clears throat> Excuse me. So once you have that concept down, next you want to move on to short circuits. Have them take their two lumps of dough, and with the LED still embedded, press them together. You should see that the LED goes out once the lumps of Play-Doh are in contact with each other. 
There is a small gap in between where when they are only touching slightly, the LED will gradually become dimmer, but once you take them and really jam them together, it will go out completely. This is because they are now forming a short circuit. Electricity is lazy and likes to take the path of least resistance. In this case, there is less resistance to go through the Play-Doh than there is to go through the LED. So the electrical current all flows down through the Play-Doh and into the black wire, and it skips the LED so the LED doesn't light up at all. Now, the way around this, when you're making sculptures, you want to avoid short circuits and make sure your LEDs stay lit up, is to use the insulating dough as kind of a buffer layer. So I'm going to take some of my insulating orange dough here and put a layer of it between my two lumps of conductive dough. What I can do now is safely come in and plug my LED in and not have to worry about the two lumps of conductive dough touching each other. Now you'll notice that I can still circumvent that and go around the insulating dough. So if I take another piece of conductive dough here and wrap it around the outside, I can still create a short circuit. So just having that insulating dough in between doesn't guarantee that you won't get a short circuit, but it certainly helps you avoid that problem where if you don't have the insulating dough, it's much easier just to bump the two together. So once you have them understand the concepts of short, open, and closed circuits, you can move on to the idea of series and parallel circuits. This is what they will need to know if they want to hook multiple LEDs up to their sculptures, and many of them will probably want to build an animal with two eyes or a house with several lights or something of that nature. So you'll need to have them test both of these things so they understand why one works and one doesn't. It's going to take me a second to prepare the Play-Doh to do this here, but the basic idea is that in a series circuit, all of the LEDs are connected in a row, so the electricity has to flow through each one in order. In a parallel circuit, all of the LEDs are next to each other, so the electricity splits up into multiple paths and goes through the LEDs separately. So, I'm going to prepare a row of alternating insulating and conductive dough to test LEDs in series, and then I'm going to compare, prepare one big lump of conductive, I'm sorry, of insulating dough separating two pieces of conductive dough to test them in parallel. So that one there is going to be for series, and this one here is going to be for parallel. So let's test series first. I'm going to take three LEDs and plug them in all in a row here. And I want to test and make sure that individually I've put those in in the right direction. So I'm going to take my red and black battery pack leads and plug them in. And it looks like I've put that one in backwards. So if I flip it around, see that one lights up. I'm going to come over here and test this one. The red one lights up. And if I test this one, the white one lights up. So, you would hope that if I take the red lead and just plug it in all the way over here, that all three of them would light up, but you can see that doesn't happen. And there's nothing wrong with them individually. If I test them one at a time, they all light up. What happens if I test them two at a time? So you can see that if I test only two at a time, they will light up, but they're much dimmer. And then if I try all three, they don't light up at all. We'll come back to the explanation for this in a minute, but first, let's compare what happens when I hook three LEDs up in parallel. So here I have just a single connection with insulating dough in the middle and conductive dough on the sides, and I'm going to just plug three LEDs in next to each other, like so. And bring the battery pack over and do the same test. Except now I can't test them individually, I'm just going to plug my leads in, and you see that all three of them light up, and it's very bright. Now, this might be kind of confusing to your students, because you think, in both cases, I'm just hooking up three LEDs, shouldn't the battery pack be able to power all three regardless? And the answer, um, how much you get into the math of this might depend on the age of the students, and whether they understand Ohm's Law, which is beyond the scope of what I'm going to do in this video, 
The simplest answer is that the battery pack can supply a limited voltage. So AA batteries individually supply 1.5 volts. Four of them combined provide six volts. And each one of these LEDs individually requires 2.5 volts to operate. So when I connect the battery pack directly to these LEDs, you can see that the positive lead of each LED, there is a direct path to it from it to the red battery pack lead that only goes through conductive Play-Doh and does not go through another LED. The same is true for this side, the negative shorter lead of each LED goes directly to the black lead. So each one of these LEDs has the full six volts from the battery pack available to it. Now, some of that electricity is lost due to the resistance of the Play-Doh, but most of it is available to power the LEDs. When I go back over to my series circuit, if I hook the battery pack up to any LED individually, it only requires 2.5 volts, so the 6 volts is more than enough. When I hook up two LEDs, they require 2.5 volts each. That's 5 volts total, so the 6 volts from the battery pack is just barely enough, and the LEDs will still light up, but they're rather dim. When I try to hook up all three LEDs at once, that requires 7.5 volts. That's 3.2.5. 3 times 2.5 which is more than the battery pack can provide. So, inherently, it's not impossible to hook up LEDs in series. You would just need a bigger battery pack with more batteries to do so, and that gets impractical. So the result here is that if you want to build a sculpture with multiple LEDs, you need to hook them up in parallel, assuming you're working with this battery pack that only has four batteries in it. The other advantage of hooking up LEDs in parallel is that if one of them goes out, or gets removed, the other ones will stay on. You can ask children about Christmas lights, if some of them are familiar with those. Some of the older strands could be a huge pain if one light went out. They would all go out. With newer strands, if you remove one light, or one light burns out, or even if I put one of these LEDs in facing the wrong direction, the other ones will stay lit. Whereas, if I go back to my series LEDs, even when there are just two of them hooked up, and they're lit. If I remove one, the other one will go out. So again, depending on the age of the students and whether they've been exposed to circuits before, this concept might be more difficult to grasp, but just make sure they understand the idea of hooking them up such that if they can trace a path from each LED it is connected directly to the battery pack, and that path does not have to go through another LED to get there. So once they understand this concept and they understand how to avoid short circuits, you can give them the challenge of designing their own sculpture, and you can give them different design criteria, like say, you know, everybody must have at least four LEDs, or everybody must use a certain amount of Play-Doh, where you can only use so much Play-Doh, something like that. So to conclude the video, I'll just go through a few quick troubleshooting steps. Again, 90% of the time, the most common problem when students come up and say, mine's not working, it's not lighting up, is just that going to be that they have an LED plugged in backwards. So first thing you can always check is just flip the LED around and see if it lights up. Double check for short circuits. Again, they might look at something and say, oh, this LED isn't lighting up, I don't have a short circuit there, I don't know what's happening, and it could be because they have a short circuit somewhere else in their model. So if I take some conductive dough and slap it across the bottom of this, you'll see that all the lights go out. So check the entire model for short circuits and make sure it's not just right in front of them where they're looking. And as a last resort, if you've checked for short circuits and you think the LEDs are hooked up in the right direction, you can try swapping out another battery pack. Sometimes, if kids really abuse them, um, these wires can come loose on the inside and you'll have a bad connection. You can also check and make sure that these prongs are firmly embedded in the Play-Doh. If kids make a sculpture and as they're handling it, this gets wiggled around a lot and it's not making good contact, then things won't light up all the way. So you can also make sure that these haven't fallen out. You can see that as I press these against here, the LEDs can kind of have a dim range in between and they're not as bright as when these are pressed in all the way. And finally, to wrap things up, just a couple safety notes. Make sure that they do not connect the battery pack leads directly to each other. This isn't really a shock hazard, but it can be a burn hazard. If you leave these pressed together for long enough, 
a very high amount of current will flow through the battery pack and that can make them get hot and potentially even explode if left like that for too long. So you want to make sure that these are always spaced apart by Play-Doh and some LEDs and not touching each other directly. You also do not want to hook the LEDs directly up to the battery pack without using Play-Doh in between because that full 6 volts will just blow out the LED when exposed to it directly. The LED won't literally explode, but it will probably burn out and then never be useful again. You'll have to buy more. So, those are all the basics to get this activity started. Remember, you want to go through open and closed circuits and short circuits and how to avoid them, and then series and parallel circuits and why it is better to hook LEDs up in parallel and not in series, and then let the kids have fun and see what they come up with. Good luck.